he said well good evening ladies and gentlemen i know everyone was sitting with bated breath waiting for us to go live but we were having such an amazing conversation backstage that uh we got started a little late but you know what better late than never and you know the anticipation has built and with good reason because the young lady that i'm about to introduce is such an amazing talent she has interviewed some of the most phenomenal and amazing people on the red carpet that you will ever see and i'm just going to give you a couple of them whitney houston shaka khan jennifer lewis alfrey woodard my girl tachina tachina am i getting that right from uh she gonna she gonna be like that's not how you say my name but from martin I, you know what the list goes on cheryl lee ralph mm -hmm. quincy thomas of studio q tv has joined yeah. us on a conversation with quincy thank you so much for being here i am so happy that you uh decided to come on and have a talk hey, with me. i'm honored i'm honored hey i'm honored you know usually i'm the one that's asking the questions but i'm honored to be able to talk about some of the things i've been able to do well you know what and that's interesting because when i when i reached out to you you know that was one of the things that you said that you know normally you're the one doing the interviewing and you know mm -hmm. what, I found that fascinating because watching some of your interviews, I said, you know what, I, I really want to sit down and just, you know, have a conversation with her about the process and how she started and, you know, her journey from from college and, and, and just becoming one of the best known red carpet interviewers out there. Because I, as I've said, you've interviewed some amazing people, a lot of them fan favorites of mine. You know, oh, a me lot too. of them. Me too. Yes, yes, yes. So how did all of this get started? Let's take it back. So where did all of this get started? Well, first of all, I wouldn't consider myself a red carpet uh, interviewer. I've been on a red carpet to do some interviews, okay, but just, you know, you, you know, just that. an interviewer. But it started on the campus of uh, Clark Atlanta University. I was a student. And I was interning at Sony Music because I wanted to be Diddy. I wanted to take that, take that. I wanted to find the next Mary J. Blige. And and uh, a friend of mine, um, he had a, a a show on the College Station because at Clark we had a TV studio and students could develop their own shows and and whatnot. And so he had a show, and he wanted me um, to interview the brat. And I was like, I mean, I could give you some free music. Like, why you want me to interview, you know? And he's like, because of your personality, I think it would be great. So I was very reluctant. He spent the whole evening on the phone with me, convincing me to uh, do this because I just, I, you know, I just, that's just not what I was like. That's not what I was trying to do i wasn't really interested but he convinced me over an evening and i went i did the um interview somebody did came up with my questions i, I mean I, I was green i didn't have any somebody wrote my questions and uh, somebody had the camera i just showed up you know i have i, I was looking like the brad i had my hat on oh. to the back the braids <laughs> and you know it was horrible in terms of interviewing because mm -hmm. I just was so green, right. like, you know, but my personality connected with the brat. So we was able to get a second interview oh, <laughs> because okay. the first one was that. So, so you, you had, well, to, you had to do a do over, but like, he, I'm sorry. You had to do a do over because the first one was, I, yeah, he looked at it. He, he got, he's like, mm -mm. <laughs> because he was like, the lighting was bad. These questions. I mean, you know, I think I told the brat, the brat had to correct me because I said, I'm sitting here. I mean, I was just honest. I was like, I'm sitting here with one of my favorite uh, rap. You know, I was like, wait, I mean, not my favorite, favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so embarrassing. She was like, you know, um, you you shouldn't say that because that don't make the nigga on the, on the side feel special. Those were <laughs> <her> exact words. <laughs> You got that. You got that right. So we did it again. And um, she came into the camera and said, y'all, she lying. She just said she just trying to clean it up. She just messed up. 
<laughs> wow. So she outed me. But the next interview that I did with her at the uh, SoSo Deaf office was much better because I had, you know, that was my that was my first time. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't something that I was dreaming to do. It was something that I was talked into doing. But because of my connection in that first interview, I was able to do the second one, which was like night and day. So let me ask you this. So you said he talked you into doing it. I mean, what was it? I mean, if, if he ever told you this later down the line, but what was his reasoning for talking you into doing that interview? I mean, was it something that he saw in you that you didn't see in yourself at that time? Because oftentimes when people are on the outside looking in, you know, they'll say, you know what? She has something, he has something and it needs to be cultivated. So did you, did you guys ever have a conversation later on down the line after you had gotten some interviews under your belt and you may have revisited something with him and, and, and you had to talk about that? I mean, I think that's exactly what he said. He's like, you might be nervous. This might not be what you want to do, but I think that you could be great at this, especially. And it was his show. Like, you know, so I didn't just do interviews. He had me, you know, introducing music segments and stuff, just you just getting my feet wet. But yeah, I think that's exactly what it was. He saw something in me that I really didn't see in myself because I just was being me, just mm-hmm. connecting, laughing. I was always joking around with people in the hallway at the, in the mass comm department, just being me. So he's like, yeah, I want, I want you, I can see you doing this. And uh, because it wasn't something that I could see me doing, he had to really talk me into it. That's interesting. So your first, it sounds like working at the station, your first, I guess for Ray was really music. Yeah. So you were mm-hmm. DJing. I wasn't DJing. I was just like, I was working for, um, like it was a Southeast manager for like, uh, Sony music, Columbia okay. and Epic records. And so I would, I would just like, he had the P one stations, which was a major radio stations. And he taught me how he gave me the list of all the college stations. So I would call the programmers and see how the records were doing, you know, working records, trying to get records to move up in rotation mm-hmm. and um, sending them promo packets when artists would come to town, you know, going with them to different like autograph signings. So I was all in the, in the world of music because I love music. And so I was working and, you know, I worked at a radio station in internships. OK, so yeah. now, that's kind of interesting how that worked out. You were doing all of that. He says you should interview people. And the, the crazy thing is because of the connections that you made doing the other thing, you had basically a ready-made list of people to interview. So basically, <laughs> right. all you, he all you, even use my, he didn't even wow. use my list. No. Like he didn't even use, no, like he, he, he had his own situation. Like I interviewed in college, I interviewed um, Evander Holyfield. I interviewed uh, Salt and Pepper. Wow. Uh, Pepper had a store in Atlanta that opened called Hip Hip Holly. So it was I can't remember Hollywood, something like that. But okay. it was an it was the opening of her store. Hmm. I interviewed her, Tretch, Naughty, you know, the whole Naughty by Nature. And he actually sold that clip, not with me in it, but their responses to MTV hmm. back in college, like just you know, in their MTV news segment. So. But none of the people that uh, I may have been connected to because of where I interned at was, you know, the, he, he didn't need any of my people. He just wanted me to interview these people. Oh, OK. So now, well, I, I'm going to stay on this for just a, a couple more minutes. So were, were there any other people at the station that he was interested in having interview? people or or was it just primarily you no like he had a whole and this was like a second show he had a whole another show with his uh friend um doug who's a comedian he's a comedian now and it was just him and doug it was called like they reviewed films oh wow Ah, it's like yeah they yeah so they talked about all you know films not he was the producer but doug was the talent and so they would you know a lot of the uh um the movie houses or whatever, they get the trailers and talk about what's the upcoming movie. So he had a whole show that wasn't premiere TV that I worked on. Uh, I think it was called pick flicks or something okay. like that. And so, yeah, he, I don't know why I have to, I have to ask him. I think I did interview him and we talked about, it. I just can't 
um, remember. But it was just kind of like, you know what? I think you would be a great, you would interview, I want you to interview the brat. I don't know if he already had the brat book. Obviously, yeah, I think he did. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he worked with other people. He worked okay. with other people. Okay. Yeah. So so after after the brat, the second one, <laughs> the second yeah. one. The, Sorry, the brat, I love you. The brat part two. Um, <laughs> And when you when you saw that you could actually do this, mm -hmm. what did that do for your mindset? Because initially you said, you know what, I don't know if I'm built for this. But yeah. then after you kind of settled yourself, um, got some questions under your belt, had the brat walk you through it a little bit, part two. Right. What was your mindset going forward? Did you say, you know what, I think I can do this? And did you kind of shift your focus because you said, well, that wasn't my 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 first thing. But then mm -hmm. after you found that you could do it, did your focus then shift to say, hey, you know what, there, there's something here mm -hmm. that, that, that I could yeah. actually capitalize on? Oh, absolutely. You know, after I did that, I was like, this is fun. You know, I, I, I like this. Mm -hmm. This is something I, I can do this. You know, and um, so when I uh, went to grad school, um, so, you know, I was I think I had a conversation with you know, one of the staff or something like, you know, and uh, she she somebody wanted to interview me about something I couldn't remember. And she's like, you know what? You should do your own show. You should do your own show. And, you know, I never even thought about it. Like it was the like access channel. And I never even I never even thought about it. And I was like. You know what? I did do that interview with the brat back then. I did, you know, maybe I should. And so, like, it's so crazy that um, me doing this kind of was generated by other people, like, mm -hmm. you know, seeing something in me and saying, you should try that. And so I developed Studio Q on the access, the local access channel in my mm -hmm. hometown. So I did that for like uh, two years, like, while I was getting my. Um, Math, like I think after I finished my master's, I launched Studio Q. Okay. Um, yeah, and and I started interviewing local, hometown people, and um, there were two so maybe two two three celebrities that came here because I'm from Springfield, Illinois, so nobody's come. I mean the what Abraham Lincoln and Barack Obama. That's mm. that's. <laughs> well, I mean you know what that's a small number, but that's a that's some thin air right there. Very yeah, thin air. That, yeah, that's a good that's a good point. Um, but you know, just growing up here is very um, white and small, and so I didn't have black radio. I didn't have um, concerts coming here. You know, like you're in uh, Philly. Yeah. So, so Powerhouse. what you took what you took for granted mm. was untouchable to me, except for on the TV. Wow. So mm -hmm. growing up, so so now, what's the closest? You what, what was that again? Spring. Spring. I'm in Springfield. You know, there's a Springfield everywhere, but I'm in Springfield, Illinois. I was. That's where I grew up, Springfield, Illinois. So I would say, like, uh, if you want to get in terms of concert, St. Louis, Missouri is about an hour oh. and forty minutes away, and then Chicago is like four hours away oh, or wow. three and a half hours. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you were basically black deprived as black, a child growing that's up. That's why I went to an HBCU. I didn't wow. have my first teacher until I went to a a black college i didn't have i had my first black teacher when i went to a i had to go to a whole black school in a whole black town <laughs> wow wow yeah so so how what was that like growing mm -hmm. up i mean because mm -hmm. i'm looking at you girl you got on the dolphin earrings you know I, <laughs> you know that's that's throwback because, right there when i was in when i was in high school okay hometown. Okay. Brooklyn is my honorary hometown. <laughs> yeah, because I peeped, I peeped them on your interviews. I said, okay, okay, she got flavor, you know, because being from Philly and having grown up in that era when wearing earrings like that was the, excuse my French, was the shit. You had the big dolphin earrings. You had the Adidas with no shoestrings in them. I did not win them. I bought them on the AF, you know, so... That's that's what I grew up with. So what wow. was it like growing up in Springfield, Illinois, where that was not a common sight? Very white, 
very um but you know what like even though it was that and i'm not saying the whole town is just like white but right. my experience my experience was very white mm -hmm. so i was in honors classes so there was like only a couple of us mm -hmm. you know that was in those classes i played on a basketball team my basketball team was white okay mm. <laughs> that's how <laughs> the basketball team was white we're being a little that, uh, the, you know what is it stereotypical here right now but so the basketball <laughs> team was wow all of yeah, them? Yeah, I mean, you? I think I had a little, like my junior high, there was more black, it was more black in my junior high okay. um, era, the couple of years I was in junior high, but when I went to high school, I was like, we only, it was only a few black people on the, on the girls' uh, basketball team. But, I, but like, I, I had a good time because mm -hmm. I was me regardless, mm -hmm. you know, I had, I was the loud person, I was at Clark, I was the loud person at in high school, the person Jonan at Clark, that was a, that was that person at Lanfear. You know, what's his name? The guy who uh plays basketball for he got they got three rings. He plays with Steph Curry. He used to play with Steph Curry. Um um oh, goodness. gosh how how he went to we went to the same high school. I don't and he's like got three rings. Wait, um, um dang he's his last name is oh god What's the starting five? Don't, <laughs> don't get me the lion. Yeah, I know. I, oh, I, wait I, a minute. I, Kevin Durant? Not Kevin Durant. Um, gosh, gosh. He, he he won all three rings with them. Um, no, but maybe it'll come. He's, he's it'll not come with the um, Golden State Warriors anymore? He wasn't. He's not now, but he was during that era when they won one, two, three. Like, okay. he was... I just can't... Re it, it, his name escapes me, but it would be a, it would be a great thing Something if I remember green. him. Nah, it's his name is uh, in the like African at the end. Igadawa. Yes. Andre Igadawa. You went to school with yes. Andre Igadawa, former former Philadelphia seventy sixer. Yeah, I interviewed him. Oh, he yeah, he was in Philly too. Yes. Look at the connection. That's crazy. He, Six degrees of separation. I interviewed him as a high school student when they went to state. I have an interview in my archives on the um on the gym floor with him. Wow. As a high school student. Because, you know, I was like, oh, we go to the same high school. You know, when you're in a small town going to state championships, the whole town gets behind it. So I was like, well, let me interview them. And so, yeah, so I have an interview with him from way back when he was, um, I think, a senior or junior or senior. OK, OK. So were you a good basketball player? Because I, I saw your picture a few days ago. I said, oh, OK. So not only does she do interviews, she's also into sports, former basketball players. So were you good? Yeah. Well, initially I was horrible, mm. but the summer from seventh to eighth grade, I played, I went to the hood, I went to the projects, I went everywhere just, you know, just to get better because I was so horrible. I didn't even want the coach to put me in because I didn't mm. even know where to stand, anything. So I had to like teach myself and I played with guys all summer long. When I went back, they didn't know who I was. They were like, well, <laughs> so, oh, wow. yeah, so, so you basically did a, a, a Space Jam transformation. <laughs> yes, yes, because I was so bad. I was like, at least I don't want to be scared. So the only way I could do that is to play every single day. Mm. And so that's what I did. And when I went back, I started. Wow. So you know what? With, with you having said that, it sounds like a foundation of hard work and tenacity was established very early yeah. so that when the brat interview number one came out and it didn't work and actually if you look at it a different way with a different mindset that was also a learning experience as well as a failing forward because now you know what not to do and then you go back and you have the second interview which was successful and now you're starting your own um company studio q and you're mm -hmm. you're beginning to interview people but you now have that foundation of i know if things don't work out that i can fix them mm -hmm. and i know that there's basically nothing that i can't do if i apply myself and i do and i do the work so can you speak to people who may be sitting there trying to figure things out, things aren't working, mm -hmm. um, 
you know, it's it's not I'm, I'm, I'm throwing things against the wall and it's not going well. What would you say to some, and especially young ladies, because. It's it's. The, the way oftentimes, you know, women of color are portrayed, they're not shown in, in, in good lights all the time, not all the time, but enough times where it has an effect on our young women. So what mm -hmm. would you say to those young ladies if they're thinking about, you know what, that's something that I want to do, but I don't know how to do it. I don't know where to start. I tried it. I fell flat on my face and, you know, people said things about me and, and I don't want to do it again. What would you say to those to those to those people? Well, I would say to have another conversation with yourself, you know, to block out the naysayers and um, failing are making mistakes or not get like that's that's a part of the process you know i mean but if you have a desire uh it's just about putting one foot in front of the other and not giving up like that's the thing is you might not get better for a while or you might get better quick but if you stop in the words of Iyanla van Zan, five minutes before the miracle like how you gonna know you were five minutes away from the breakthrough that you were looking for but you gave up so now you don't even know your dream is right around the corner from your struggle, you know? So you just have to keep, keep at it. And that, that's what it, you have to have that desire. Like I, my desire, you know, to be better from um, as far as a basketball player was like, I knew I had to just do something. And I was what, 12, 13. Mm -hmm. And um, I would get up every morning and go down to the school ground and just shoot and shoot and shoot. And then I said, but I got to play against people. I got to do this. I got to do that. I didn't know that I would be that impressive when school finally started. I just knew that I would be better than I was, you know. So my thing is just like not giving up, not not allowing people to um, uh, dim your light, dim your passion. You just got to uh, keep at it. I look at stuff that I did, you know, a million years ago. I'm like, oh, my God. But I'm I'm so bad. But I'm happy that I did it. I started it. I tried, you know. Like, so just putting that one foot in front, just keep, keep at it, not giving up. That's a lot of the stuff that I, I've been able to accomplish. It's just because, A, I thought that it could be, I could see it, I could visualize it. And I'm like, if I want it, it could happen and not giving up. I didn't, you know, and I always felt that the people around me um, might not be able to understand or could see what I could see for myself. Like they may have lived in a box or especially being in a small town, mm -hmm. you know, you're like, oh, that's crazy. So I didn't even share a lot of this stuff because I'm mm. like, get out of here. You know, you know, I mean, Whitney Houston, I shared that all the time, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I just did. So I would just say like, just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Don't give up. That's the main thing. Because if you give up, you never know. You just, you just never know. You know what? And that's so interesting that you should say that. And I want to go back to something that you said. But before that, Steve Harvey, because I, I listen to Steve Harvey, I, I'm very big on people that are into mindset, personal development. I'm very big into that. And Steve Harvey was talking and he said, if you're going through hell, keep going. Why would you stop? Mm -hmm. Because eventually you're going to come through it. And I think that's mm -hmm. where so many people get stuck, that when it gets when it gets tough, then they just give up. Not understanding, like you said, that you were so close that have you had only kept going. You and people don't arrived. know how close they oh. are. Like you, you did all of that and to give up like it was right there. But, just, you know, you, you don't know how close you are, how far away. And God can turn on a light switch. Like, <laughs> you you can one minute be here, the next minute be doing your dream. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it, it really can be that quick. I mean, look at Tabitha Brown. Hello? Come on now. She got on TikTok. Now, like, she's, you know, she's got a show on Ellen. She's got all of these. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's amazing. But, you know, what if she would have just said, screw this, like, yeah. come on, look where she would be. She's a whole she a whole movement now. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, I do my best to impart that because my other guy that I listen to, Eric, the hip hop preacher, he says, oh. I'm going to be compensated for my pain. 
He said, you've gone through all of this pain, all of that heartache, all of that stuff, and then you're just going to quit? He's like, oh, no, I'm going to be compensated for my pain. So I like that. The, the I like that. Dude is a beast. I love him. But that that resonated with me so much because, you know, this business is hard. This is a yeah. hard business. So if it you're is. doing it, don't do it half-assed. But more importantly, don't stop because every day you get better. Mm -hmm. Every day you learn something else that will take you further than than you were before you know and, that, that's the way it works for me yeah and 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 i love um that you said that this business is hard because you know people need to understand that too everything takes work everything takes time everything is a process you know so let's talk about that because i know while you were and are still on your journey you've had people yeah come into your life who could not understand the journey that you were on and where you were going because mm -hmm. um oftentimes and and sometimes I've, I've learned that it's not that they're coming from a bad place it's mm -hmm. just that their ceiling is here whereas mm -hmm. you have no ceiling so yep. they can't understand your trajectory because they've mm -hmm. hit their ceiling and they're mm -hmm. they're talking to you from their place of understanding. So what was that like as you were getting deeper into, you know, interviews with celebrities, Studio Q, that taking off and being successful, um, you becoming a brand because you are a brand and dealing with people who just may not have understood. And most importantly, like we just talked about hard work because all they see is you on the carpet. But mm -hmm. they don't see what happened for you to get to the carpet. So, how did how did you handle those situations? Because I know you've had them. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, even just going going to college, you know, mm -hmm. some family. Uh, so I think one of my great uncles, he rest in peace. He was like, I mean, why don't you just go on up to the community college? Like, what you, what you gotta? <laughs> why you gotta go up? Like, you know. But I'm like, because that's not where I want to go. <laughs> that's where I, I see myself here. And so I really, to be quite honest, I didn't entertain a lot of conversations or situations with people to, um, I already could see that they couldn't see where I was, what I was talking about, mm -hmm. or, or they couldn't wrap their brain about around what I intended to do, what I wanted to do, what I aspired to do. So I was in my own bubble. You know what I mean? I didn't, I wasn't having conversations um, to let them uh, uh, dilute, dim my light, dim my dream, uh, tarnish my vision. Um, as far as like, there's a whole bunch of work behind, that's with everything. Yeah, like people don't, you know, I'm editing, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing everything, you know? <laughs> craft services I'm sure, I'm sure you understand <laughs> yeah what did you say you, you doing what craft you services say? too you editing and frying chicken at the same time because you right. got to feed the crew right. been there done that <laughs> right now i don't edit did, but when i was like shooting you said films, you did a whole award show you look, did a whole so you are everything you got like fifteen thousand hats you know <laughs> you know it's interesting when we would do the show we we would always get i knew it would be something but I didn't know it would look like mm -hmm. this and I was always surprised by that statement but more importantly when people would say well I could do this and, mm -hmm. and I would just look look at them and smile <laughs> saying to myself they don't understand that the show is May 30th and on June the 1st I'm back at it for next May come on now I you know and and every at the end of every show I would say the same thing and my wife would tell you I'm going to take two weeks off because I'm tired because I've been working all year. So I'm taking two weeks to myself, but your mind won't even allow you to do that. Mm -hmm. So I rest for a day. And even in the day of rest, I'm writing things down for next year. And then June the 1st, I'm, I'm right back at it. But people don't see that they see the, the end result. And I was interviewing um, Brenda Gilbert um, a couple of weeks ago from Brown entertainment. She's so nice. She's so nice. I saw that. I saw your post she about it. So they had like nice. so many, they, like so oh. six, all the 
movies and uh-huh. everything that they've done. What an ama- what an amazing company. And she talked about the behind the scenes hard work that they have to do. And people yes. just don't understand. You see, see that's the the thing with most people that aren't serious about their business. They see the end product. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when you go to the store and you see that product on the shelf, something had to happen in order for it to get there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, there had to be some, yeah. some things going on, some, some mixing in a bowl. Something had to mm-hmm. happen for that product to end up where, where, where it is. And with that, let me ask you this. Now, are you, is it just you doing everything or do you have a team of people or are you the uh, jack of all trades and master of them as well? Well, you know, um, initially, initially when I started Studio Q um, in my hometown on the Access Channel for this, yeah, I did do everything. Mm-hmm. Like I, I didn't, I, I didn't know how to edit. I taught myself how to edit. Mm-hmm. I, um, you know, with the Access Channel, I think you can like fill out a slip and you can get people to come and do camera. But you know, I would film stuff on my own. I would, you know, get kids to participate like i was like oh i'm gonna have a rap battle like oh if i i, I would see in some stuff stuff on tv and i would you know duplicate or imitate or try to brand it for what i was doing so yeah i was like just a solopreneur before mm. i moved out to um la but once i got to la um and i was working for other tv shows and stuff um and i relaunched studio q online in 2012 the uh uh, my um, best friend Tam Anderson, she it was just me and her. We were it, we was like black girl magic. Hmm. Like she every interview that you've seen um, from 2012 to now, hmm. she's she not every well yeah probably unless like it's Skype like this. Don't or, don't do a debrat. No. You about to see you about to do another ah! debrat. See you about to get see, yourself see, in that's trouble. The wrong part. I know. Because no, when she listens to this, she's like, hold up, hold up, Q. We'll do the next show without me and see how that works for you. <laughs> see, you about to get yourself No, in trouble. no, she did. No, I, I, I always have thanked her, given her props for or for that. Because, you know, I know what it's like to have done it by myself. So to have to have you just hold a, a, a remote, to have you hold a light, to have you do anything for me um, was, uh, uh, I was grateful. And she filmed all of my interviews um, that you saw on the red carpet, that was her. Mm. Like she, she filmed all of them. You know, sometimes she helped me edit. Sometimes she helped me with the questions. Sometimes um, she, and she like uh, would find the email and stuff. Like I didn't even, you know, when I, I think I interviewed, uh, when I interviewed Layla Hathaway and Eric Benet, like she did that. She just, she found their people and she got that. So it was real helpful to have help, but it was just, it still was still a lot of work, but it was us two. And uh, I could tell the difference from when I did everything on my own versus right. versus having at least some help, you know. So I'm really grateful that I had that because I'm not sure I would have been able to get all of the content that you um, are able to see without somebody, you know. Mm-hmm. And that somebody was just as committed as I was to not just um, getting good people, but it looking good and, you know, just all the things that you want to put out quality stuff. So, hmm. so a good team is critical. Mm-hmm. Critical. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, and the fact that she cared about it looking good as well. She, you know, the, 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 what, you know, like, Oh, Quincy, we need a, we need a, we need a new ring light. Like we need, you know, we need to get this or whatever, all those things, you know, cause I'm like about bloom where you planted. If I, if I can't afford it right, I'm going to do the best I can with what I got until mm-hmm. I can get better. Mm-hmm. And she was like, Oh, we need this. We need that. So that was very helpful. Just having somebody who was interested. I was like, wow. Thank you, God. Thank you, Tam. You know? Wow. So you know what? That's a rarity because one of the things that, people who own companies whatever the one thing that they talk about sometimes is when people don't see the vision the way you see it Mm -hmm. so they don't go as hard at it as you do 
Uh, mm-hmm. I spend a lot of sleepless nights like that because I'm saying they don't see what I see. My wife would be like, because it ain't theirs. Exactly. So, so I, I like I like your wife. I, I follow Gary Vee and he says that all the time. It's not their company. It's yeah. yours. And actually, I saw I saw a clip from him the other day where this gentleman was basically talking about his employees and dude was like, your problem is you putting unexpected expectations on your employee. And I was, I was saying, come on, Gary, why you got to shed that light on a brother like that? <laughs> it, it, but look, but look, the truth resonates. Though. Yes. Even if you don't want to hear it yes. at first, if it's true, that's, that's the only reason I follow him and watch his content because he be speaking facts. Yeah. Him. Uh, I, I listen to to him on Instagram. Um, he's getting free advertisement right now, but he doesn't need it. Um, his podcast, all of that, and 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 I always tell people, if you want to be successful, you got to follow successful people and listen to what successful people do, because that's how you become successful. You 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 take their their blueprints and then you just kind of shrink it down and 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 into microcosms. So you, you can actually implement it into, into, you know, what you're doing, but back to the, the, the importance of a team member. So it's, it's great that you have someone that actually shares your vision that would actually say to you, when you say, look, I'm gonna get it in where I fit it in. And she's like, no, you're not going to fit nothing in here because this is what we need in order for it to look like this, because if it doesn't look like that, that does not match up with the Quincy Thomas brand of excellence. So if I want to fall off, she got my back and ain't going to allow that. And oh, that, yeah. that, that is phenomenal. That is- Well, it is, it, it, it is. And you know what, there was a website. I mean, I won't mention the website, but uh, that um, wanted to partner with me where I did the interviews and then they would put it on their site. But what, what they they like well we don't know if this is really going to work out because you have a wonderful rapport with the celebrities but the kind of stuff that we want to know might be uncomfortable you know because it's like kind of not salacious but salacious tabloidian yeah exactly not all the way but enough that to me it would um it would it would change the spirit of what i do you know and i think we did about three interviews and it just was like we need to part ways because I won't, I, this is not what I want to be remembered for. These are not the kind of questions that are interested to me. I know it's for you and your audience, but I'm the one who's doing the interview. Mm -hmm. I'm the one who they're going to remember in this way. And, um, I remember Tam was like, it just don't feel like studio Q. I was like, wow, Mm -hmm. we have, we, we have a groove and we both agreed that this is not how we want, you know, to, conduct ourselves even if it was just like simple stuff because i'm about the craft i want to know uh i got my name from the studio q because i used to watch inside the actor studio a lot love that and that and james lipton was my guy oh my goodness james lipton was my guy so i was like i'm gonna name my show studio and then you know i just added the q for quincy Mm -hmm. but that is why because i would i would make study tapes and watch him do interviews you know, um, with different people. And with Danny Glover, a uh, quick story, Danny Glover came to town um, and to Springfield, which is like, how is that possible? And I snuck backstage um, with a cameraman mm. and did interview, gave him a gift of a book that he used as his acting Bible. Mm. And how did I find that information out? Because I of James Lipton on Inside the Actor's Studio. And when he opened up the gift and he saw that book, he was like, he was blown away, Mm. just blown away. And that's the kind of impact, not necessarily from the gift, but that's the kind of impact I want to have when I do my interviews. Let it be fun. Let it be insightful. Let it be something that you remember in a good way, you know, and, and let's talk about your craft, not, not about, uh, whatever social media or tabloids or anything like that. Like I'm not, you know, that's not my, that's not my uh, ministry. Yeah. And you know what? That that is so phenomenal. Because I tell people all the time. If your name is on it, when things go wrong, that's the first person they're going to mention. Well, Quincy blank, 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 blank. It's not going to be. Well, that website 
blank, blank, Come blank, blank, blank. It's going to be Quincy. Exactly. And a, a couple of interviews on this podcast, you know, before I would bring the guests on, the one thing that I would tell them is you will never be blindsided ever because it's all about your integrity and your professionalism. I'm bringing you on here so people can get an insight into how it is they do what they do and they do it so well. So me asking you about your, your boyfriend's jump off, that's that's not, you don't do stuff like that. And exactly. you do have things out there that are like that. And that was the beauty of Inside the Actor's Studio. Come on because, now, I'm so happy that you know about that oh, show and that I you like it. I loved, when he passed away, it broke my heart. You James do. Lipton, watching him, and, and for those who are watching and those who are going to be listening on the podcast, I highly recommend that if you are serious about what you're doing, then you need to go on YouTube and watch all the episodes of Inside the Actor's Studio with James Lipton. That is your assignment. Because every time you watched his show, it was a master class. Master class. It was a master class. I saw the one with... Uh, Robin Williams, which was unbelievable. And then uh, another favorite of mine was uh, Mariska Hardate. That thing had me in tears because she went in so deep. And by the end, because I'm a crier. So by the end of that show, I was like blubbering. Because mm. they're, they're, they feel, they, they always say, because they interview actors that went on his show. And they say, well, why would you go on that show? They said, because I feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. I feel comfortable. And, you know, mm -hmm. actors are real mm, about who they talk to. Yeah. And they all would go on his show. And here's the interesting thing. I remember watching one interview one time and they panned the audience. And Bradley Cooper was a student in the audience. Yep. Yep. And I saw the Bradley Cooper interview that he did. Yeah, they talked about that. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. So... It's a master class. So if you want to know anything about the art and the craft of acting, come on. The actor studio is the place to be. I love I inside girl, we could be here all day talk about inside. <laughs> I love and, and, and another thing I wanted to add to the inside the actor studio, what you just uh so beautifully um spoke about is if you also looked in the audience of whoever was being interviewed in the front row. They bought people like they mama, they agent, mm -hmm. they're like, it was an event. You know what I mean? Like everybody is not doing that for every interview that they had, no. but inside the actor studio was a special moment where they wanted those people to be there because it was an experience. And it was, and you felt because it was so, you know, it's interesting. And you know what, that, that's really the sign of a phenomenal interviewer that you could look through a screen and feel the intimacy of the moment as if you were sitting in the audience yourself because you would be so mesmerized because, you know, he would have the legs crossed and he would have the card and he would speak like, well, uh, Bradley, thank you so much for coming to the actor's studio. We're so happy to have you here. And you're like, you know, this dude is too smooth. Yeah. He is too, yeah. but he was so good at what he did. I'm aspiring on. to one day, some, you know, a hundred years from now, get get to that but back yeah. to you Whitney Houston that was a phenomenal interview and it was so energetic how now and I read how it happened but I want you to tell the audience how the interview with Whitney Houston came about well, I saw a commercial on the show uh, MTV Fanatic, you know, and it was about how uh, fans got to meet their stars. MTV would su surprise you wherever you were in the world and fly you to wherever that star was and do an interview. Now, when I saw it, there was no advertisement for Whitney Houston whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, but I said, what a great vehicle for my dream to come true. I am going to create a tape and send it. 
And so I did that. I think I uh, uh, showed my mom. It was the only time in, in my whole life uh, of loving Whitney Houston where my mom said, I mean, you don't, th- you don't think you should go ahead and let Whitney go? I mean. <laughs> time to break up, girl. Yeah. <laughs> Leave her alone. She done moved on. Like free Whitney, free Whitney. <laughs> you were like, nah. Nah, no, like, no. I was like, um, uh, no. <laughs> so I sent it. She saw the text. She's like, oh, it's cute, but you don't think you're a little too old. You don't think like this. Let her go. You know, I was like, let her go. I don't think so. So I sent the tape in. Um, but I say that because it, you know, at the end it actually happened. So my mom was like, I'm never going to say nothing against mm-hmm. nothing, never, ever, ever again. But so I sent the tape and I think like, I mean, it was around like July, like, you know, many, many, many years ago and close to November, I get a call saying that you are one of 10 people that may be selected to interview um, Whitney Houston. And I was like, oh my God, what? Okay. You know, and the whole time it was me. They just said that just to, you know, mm-hmm. get all the information because they didn't want to uh, have I did go to college and come back. So I, I had, there was no uh, shrine of Whitney Houston to prove. So I just had to do it through stories. Mm-hmm. I had went in the basement and found like three or four magazines or something and lined them up. I was like, <laughs> you know, this is all I got left. <laughs> this is all I have to offer. <laughs> I hope and it's enough. Know, yeah, so I just told stories and timed myself so that I wouldn't just be, you know, a 30 minute tape. And um, sent it, prayed, went on about my business. When they called and said I was one of the top 10, I went into like, oh, my God, I got to prove, got to prove. Um, you know, they asked me for, like, people who could verify my love for Whitney. Mm. And I gave them a list and blah, 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 blah. And uh, then one day when I'm playing basketball with my friend, the the uh, camera's rushing in, you know, yeah, they surprised me. Yeah, so it's it's on YouTube. Y'all can go watch it. They come in and surprise me. And uh, my friend uh, Sarah, rest in peace. She went. That's a, a picture in the back of oh, me okay. and Whitney. Oh yeah, and, I see it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, she surprised me. They came. The limo was there, and I was like hyperventilating in the limo. And the, guess what? The producer of that show was a black woman. Wow. She was, and she, and we got in a limo and I was just like losing my mind. And she looked at me and she said, let me tell you something. She said, we sent Whitney Houston a bunch of tapes. Whitney picked you. So Whitney wants to meet you too. And wow. I was like, and that just set the tone for the whole, you know, experience. Like knowing that, I, like she wanted to meet me too and later I would find out because the creators called me and they said they hadn't had Whitney booked at the time that I sent my tape and mm-hmm. they actually used my tape to book Whitney Houston wow wow so you you got Whitney Houston booked that's what they told me wow well it yeah. showed through now what did she call you it was a it was a fan and a friend, but it the, you combined oh, the yeah. words. Uh, uh, um, was well, it a fan? The, well, the, you know, because the show was called Fanatic, and mm-hmm. I was determined not to be remembered as a fanatic. Mm-hmm. So I went in. Uh, oh, Patty LaBelle's from, from Philly, and Patty would always say that um, she referred to her fans as friends, mm-hmm. as her family. And so I went in with that thought because I was like, if I see Whitney Houston you know, after this, I don't want her going, oh, they go to Fanatic. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. Like, oh, <laughs> you know? hey, 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 girl. Yeah, hey. exactly. Because yeah. uh, just, just because of the word. Right. And so I went in saying, friend, mm-hmm. I'm your friend, you know, and she, and so, you know, it took a minute, but by, by the time it was over, it, that's, that's what she was calling me. She called me friend. And whenever I would see her after that, that's how she greeted me. My friend, my friend. Mm-hmm. So, because you know yeah. what you 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 could here's the thing you could tell when somebody wants something from you you didn't want anything from her you just want mm-hmm. to sit and talk and yep. see true realness always comes through 
because mm. when you're at that level that she was that elite thin air level once again you develop a sense of who's real and who's not because you have to because it's basically a survival tool because you have so many people that would just love to latch on to you and suck you dry so you have to have discernment times two you really yes. do and that interview it, it was you guys it was it was funny and i was cracking up i'm supposed to be driving but i'm driving and peeking at the same time you know <laughs> you know i have hands free so i wasn't holding my phone i have hands free and all of that but it was so funny because when you guys started talking about the different songs <laughs> <laughs> when you guys started talking about the different songs and you're singing the songs and let's talk about you and singing really quick because <laughs> i know whitney i know whitney was saying to myself you know i love this young lady because she's really a fan but i'm gonna just need her to stick with the interviewing and I'm gonna I'm gonna need her to let me stick with the singing because that's what because I'm Whitney Houston. But I'm, gonna miss it. I'm never gonna miss an opportunity. Oh, I'm absolutely gonna... not, <laughs> absolutely not. Because my favorite artist, my favorite solo artist was Al Jarreau. So if I had ever had the opportunity to meet Al Jarreau and he was like Floyd, do some you know do a scat line with me. Hey, now I look, I can't sing. The cats be like, look, leave it alone. <laughs> But if Al Jarreau would have would have would have said sing you know take five we'd have been singing take five so I get I heard it that. I get it you know but uh, you know listening to you sing and then the other interviews where you're singing oh the one on Instagram was hilarious when the girl was like oh come on and then you sing she's like oh no that's all right <laughs> <laughs> I see you know <laughs> but look you saw how eager I was right yeah you know you got an A for effort. But oh girl, <laughs> she said, "Oh, you gonna sing back real?" She said, "You gonna sing back real?" You like, yeah. And you threw that note. She said, "Oh, that, that's okay. I see. You know, I love that. Q, clip. Q's all right, because but I love that because at the end she says, "But you do a good interview, though." There you go, and that's what you're known for. Hey, I'm not a singer. That's your. That's your. That's your job. Mm -hmm. But I can interview a singer. I can't yeah, necessarily yeah. sing, but I can interview one. <laughs> But man, just to, just to hum a note with people who can blow yeah. is, is is amazing. <laughs> yeah, and and you know, you've interviewed Shaka Khan. I know, man. Mic drop, mic mic drop. Because listen, Whitney was influenced by Shaka Khan. So, come on. <laughs> that, that is so. That circle is so amazing. How that works. Mm -hmm. You're sitting there talking to Whitney, who was into, who, who's influenced by Shaka Khan. Yes. Icons. 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 So you, black, you, you, black royalty. Girl, you, you've, you've interviewed actual icons. So what was it like talking with Shaka Khan? Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan. She was amazing, very down to earth, cool. I mean, it was an event for, I mean, I think it was called Daughters of Soul. Um, one of her background singers was doing a documentary and Daughters of Soul meant like the Daughters of Soul singers. Like I think um, it was it was a few other people. Layla Hathaway was there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Sly's daughter was there. So and Shaka's daughter was there. And so when I got to interview Shaka, I was just like, oh my God. Like, I still look at that picture and go, really? I met and interviewed Shaka? You know, if I just met her, I would have been cool just with that. But mm -hmm. to be able to engage and interact and she laugh and, I mean, it was just, it was just amazing. It was, it really was. I mean, so I'm, I'm grateful because a lot of times, a lot of people I just have interviewed one time, mm -hmm. but I'm good. That's good. Like, you know, yeah, <laughs> I'm, but... I'm, I'm grateful for that because some people will never get to talk to them. So really quick, because there are a couple of more people that I want to talk about, but how do you, how do you go about getting your interviews? Do you just Listen, reach out, they, email or reach out? Re, re, I, I would always say, uh, uh, Tam and I would always say God is our booking agent because we like, I mean, wow, but really just is simple. Um, um, social media, like I've got interviews through DMS. Mm-hmm. 
I've got I got an interview with Sheila E at a Rochelle Pharrell concert because she was at the concert mm. and when they had intermission, I just walked up to Sheila E and I was like, you know, can we get a picture? We're fans, da 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 da. But then I proceeded to ask her for an interview. Mm -hmm. I didn't know she was gonna say yes or no. She said yes, and then she kept her word. Mm. You know, so not being afraid to approach people, not being afraid to um, send a DM, um, old school way, just find out who their manager, their publicist is, send the email. Um, if you have a reel of people that you've already done, send that. If you don't, just ask, ask, ask. That's it. The ask. worst thing they can say and, is no. And come up with a big, long list of people. So if if five people don't respond, go to the next five. Yeah. Those five, go to the next ten. Like, just keep it moving. Mm -hmm. That's 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 good. That's good because that's how a lot of mine. I'm in Instagram. Hey, I like for you. Hello, I like for you to come on the show. And and exactly. you know, and I've had some no's. And I said, okay, thank you so much. And I always thank them. Thank you so much for at least taking the time to get back to me even, and even telling me no. Keep it professional. Yeah. You don't want to be like, you know what? You know what the blah, 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 with you then. No, you don't want to do that. <laughs> because it, no for me is not right now. So I'll get back to you. Yes, you know, I love that. I used to always to say that. No doesn't mean no. It means not right now. No is always not right now, not yet. You know, next opportunity. Come on now. Mm -hmm. You just it's, it's how did you get the interview with the with the person from Braun Studios? How did you get that interview? I inboxed her. Come on now. I inboxed her because we're we're friends on Instagram. She is one of the most down to earth people that you will ever want to meet. And we actually met uh on Clubhouse. I think let me see back in april uh my father had passed away back in april and i went in a room and was talking about my dad and you know i broke down and looked on my instagram and she she was in the room she started following me i had you know and wow. i was like what and yeah. i said oh and you know um i started going on her instagram page and engaging that is so important when you talk to people and I just started engaging with her and just really researching, you know, everything that she had done, her and her husband, Aaron. And I said, it would be so fascinating to talk with her. And one day I just said, because my thing is the worst thing that you can say to me is no. OK, I didn't lose anything. I didn't have anything to begin with. So what's the worst thing that could happen? They say no. OK, you keep it moving, like you exactly. said. So I just interviewed her and she said, I'd love to. I said, you would. See? See? And... The, the, the power of not being afraid to ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it really, it really, it really works. And that was uh, a very educational interview because when you move that type of money and finance those types of films, you, you just learn through osmosis. You just learn by sitting watching and, and 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 looking and that's the beauty of that's the thing that i love about doing this podcast mm -hmm. the fact that you know i'm i'm interviewing people but i'm learning so much and here's the thing that everything that i learn i turn around and incorporate it into my business come on because now because you can't interview people such as yourself and not hear you talk and not walk away with something that you can turn around and use because if mm. you're not doing that it's a wasted hour or so, in my opinion. Right. That's just my right. opinion. But back yeah. to you. Back to you. Okay. <laughs> Jennifer Lewis. Jennifer Lewis. Jennifer Lewis is one of my favorite people. She is one of the best actresses out there. She is funny. She is so real. And it's interesting because I went to the American Black Film Festival years ago and she was there doing an interview and it was so funny because I was like, wow. So the person that you get on camera is that person. There is no, there is no change. Nope. There is no Jennifer this way, Jennifer that that's Jennifer. Yeah. And I love that about her. So what was it like interviewing her? And if I'm not mistaken, she was sitting at her piano and the construction guy, did, what was going on with that? It was just somebody like a leaf blower, you know, it was just a moment, 
yeah, somebody was just mowing the lawn and it was messing with her mm-hmm. trying to speak. Like if you hear something in the background, she's like, what? You know, but she's Jennifer Lewis. So you're not going to just get that. You're going to get Jennifer Lewis. Yes. Uh, by the way, happy Jackie Washington Day. It's Jackie Washington Day today. Oh, nice. <laughs> yes. From the uh, movie Jackie's Back, which is a cult classic, hilarious, starring Jennifer Lewis. And um, I love that movie. So today's happy Jackie Washington Day. I, Jennifer Lewis, like, I first of all, I can't really take credit for, um, like, knowing the amazing uh, body of work and everything. Jennifer Lewis was one of Tam's favorite. Oh. And so she reached out and got that booking for me. Wow. But we got to go to her house. Mm. Okay. Like I've never been to, I've only been to a few people's houses, and she is one of those few people. And so interviewing Jennifer Lewis, like I prepared um because Jennifer Lewis doesn't need anybody to interview her. Like mm. she she is a one-woman show. And I, I don't I, mean that yeah. she don't. I, I don't mean that she doesn't do interviews. I'm saying that she can interview herself. Mm-hmm. Like she can, <laughs> it could just turn into a show, but I didn't want a show. I wanted to actually be able to engage and have her think and go back and share stuff that maybe she hadn't shared before, you know, and talk about things that she might not have talked before. So the only way to do that is to steep myself in research. So, you know, I, I want, I want my James Lipton moment with Jennifer Lewis mm-hmm. and, and uh, by researching the heck out of her, I was able to um, have an amazing first interview. Like she is, out of all the people I've interviewed for Studio Q, she is my Studio Q fave. Like mm. my best interviews have been with Jennifer Lewis. I've done like maybe three or four. Okay. And um, yeah, and she she's just amazing because everything that you said about her is real. Like whether the cameras are on or off, she's Jennifer Lewis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and what's so funny, What's so interesting, I saw the clip where you had with her and Whitney. Yes. I I said two of my faves in one video. Yeah. You know, because they get the preacher's wife together. And um, I just I just love both of them. And but what what are the things that they both have in common is they're down to earth. Yes. Extremely talented, extremely talented. But they're just down to earth real, you know. Um, and they're not a, um, like, you know how, oh, some people, and you don't have to be famous to be a person like this, who only wants to deal with the upper echelon. Mm -hmm. They will do, they're not a respecter of persons like that. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they'll talk to you, any, they have that realness. It's about the connection. And and they're that way all the time. And it comes across because when you see her, it's like, yo, we could be at the cookout drinking a beer. Or, yes. or, you know, with a Hennessy chaser. And that's yes. what that's what she, you know, and, and she immediately puts you at ease mm-hmm. with her personality because it's so big. She an alpha female. Yeah. She an alpha female, you know? So that it was a it, it was like a roller coaster ride with her, but I was just so proud of myself that I was able to ask her questions that made her think, that made her think beyond what maybe she normally would share. And it was just awesome. And after the interview, um, you know, she took us in our, in her house and Mm. showed us her pictures and, and, you know, Barack Obama, Michelle, like I was like, wow, you know, cause we could have just, we did the interview outside by her pool, the first one. Okay. And so after we finished, we could have just left, but she invited us in and it's very warm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when she did her, um, her book, uh, The Mother of Black Hollywood, mm. you know, of course, I wanted to interview her about that. And when we got there, her publicist said, um, she said, do not forget Studio Q. Mm. Like, what, dude, I was like, what? What? <laughs> so uh. that's how we got on the piano to say, after we finished the interview, she said, you guys want to have some fun? And oh, yeah, so her. we got to go mm. to we went to the piano and we did In These Streets. <laughs> In These Streets. One of my favorite songs. She is hilarious. In These Streets. You know, that you could turn something so hood, so classic. I know. In These Streets. Yes. You know, so I, like, I, oh. I love her. I love her. She, 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 she is amazing. But you've, you've also talked with one of my absolute favorites. Viola Davis. Wow. 
Yeah. Yeah. And the quick story about that, we it was at the, um, there's an annual event that uh, Halle Berry um, uh, either co-host uh, w- with the Genesee House in LA for battered women. Mm-hmm. It was like a charity event. And Viola was there. And um, extra, extra, you know, the extra, extra. Yeah. So they were standing next to me. And it it wasn't like crowded. Like, I mean, there was a bunch of photographers at the other end. But as far as people doing interviews, it wasn't that many uh, people at the time when Viola Davis and her husband, uh, Julius Tennant, were there uh, to be interviewed. So, you know, I'm waiting patiently as they uh are being interviewed by Extra and I'm next. And whoever the publicist was, I don't know if it was her personal publicist or the event publicist, but they didn't know who the heck Studio Q was. Mm -hmm. Like she wasn't trying to have me interview Viola Davis. I could tell by her her body language. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, yeah, she wasn't a Karen, but she was a Mm -hmm. white woman. (laughs) (laughs) Stay away, stay back. Yeah, distance, but please. I knew, I could, I could just tell <laughs> right. that like she knew who extra was, but who is Studio Q? Where, mm-hmm. you know, what are your numbers? Who are you? Uh, but I put my microphone out like I will not be, I will not be skipped over. Mm-hmm. No, I will not. Not with Miss Viola Davis. I was Absolutely. nervous as all get out, but I did not allow that to happen. <laughs> I said I'm gonna have my interview, <laughs> and I did. Viola, I, she seemed completely oblivious of it, but I could tell just because I've been on a bunch of red carpets, and I could tell. But it was an amazing moment because I mean, she's Viola Davis, yeah. and it was before she got the the the, the Emmys and the, and the Oscar. But it was still just like, you know, this regal person. I mean, yeah. I was I, I can't believe I was able. I, I barely was able to get out my question because I was so freaking nervous. But yeah. So before I ask you about the next phenomenal actress that you interview, how do you do that? Because when you're talking to a Whitney, a Shaka, uh, mm-hmm. you know, a, a Viola, how do you get through those nerves? How do you, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm nervous every, cause my wife earlier today, she's like, are you nervous? I'm like, no. Then I was like, yeah, I'm nervous. Cause I'm always <laughs> nervous. So how do you, how do you deal with that? Well, I think there's, if, if you're if you're passionate and excited about what you do, just like any athlete, just like anybody who loves what they do, you're always going to have a little bit of that. If you don't, you should be worried. Yes. But how I how I help push it down to be able to meet the occasion is research that helps me become comfortable enough to have the conversation that I want to have, despite my nerves over who they are and what they've accomplished. That is so true because I try to find everything I can because I never want to come to an interview looking like I don't know what I'm talking about. But more importantly, I don't want to come here wasting anybody's time because as my mentor who doesn't know he's my mentor, Eric, the hip hop preacher Thomas says, time is the one commodity that you can never get back. He said, you can Ever. waste my money because I can recoup money. But time is something that I can never recoup. So you're not going to get that. So I want to do interviews where it's engaging, where it's conversational, but more importantly, where the person that I'm interviewing knows that, okay, Floyd did some homework, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, you know, I, I'm just like you. I'm, I'm nervous because when I did a couple of new, I'll, I'll give you an example. When I did the interview with, with Brenda. I woke up at two in the morning and could not go back to sleep. I was so scared. Wow. Wow. Because if you read, and and I've interviewed some amazing people on here, but that was the biggest one to date. And, you know, no shade, but it just is what it is. Because, I mean. But look, drop drop a few of those movies that they've done so people will know exactly why. Well, the reason I was so nervous is because Brown Entertainment, Judas and the Black Messiah, Fences, Joker, the upcoming Ghostbusters, um, Candyman that's just coming out. They're actually going to work with Ben Crump on uh, his upcoming series, Fatherhood with Kevin Hart. So, yeah, they just they just did a um, six picture deal with Warner Brothers for one hundred million dollars. So, yeah, I woke up at two in the morning and I couldn't go back to sleep. (laughs) 
<laughs> exactly. Because I'm I, just wanted, my... I just wanted people to know that uh, Brenda just not anybody. She just not like they've done some phenomenal things oh my for you to feel the way that you do. Yeah, and and there's so many things that I didn't even name, but mm -hmm. I was so scared. But even through the fear, what kicked in was I researched every single thing about them that I could find so that when I hit that live button, the nerves went away much like tonight. I wasn't as scared, but I'm always scared. I'm always nervous. But once I hit that live and I'm in my element, much like mm -hmm. I'm sure with you, once you say mm -hmm. camera's rolling, it's, 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 it's go time because yeah. you, you got to show up. Yep. You got to show up because guess what? If you don't show up, ain't nobody showing up. <laughs> Love that. Ain't nobody showing up. <laughs> but back to you. Alfrey Woodard. Alfrey yeah. Woodard. And she was in she was in fatherhood with Kevin. Or I don't know if you've seen I that. know. She, Did I you see that? that movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Was that movie? She was great. But she's great in everything. Yes, she is. But you know who surprised me? Who? Kevin did. Mm, tell me why. Well, I I know Kevin can act. Mm -hmm. but he's more of a comedic type of actor. But what I did not know was that Kevin had that type of range as a serious actor. Mm -hmm. And I always, now this is just me personally. I know when someone's doing a good job, if it hits me emotionally mm -hmm. and being a father and a husband, I'm not going to spoil the movie for anyone, but being a father and a husband, there was and a girl dad. Yeah. And a girl dad, big time there were certain scenes in that movie where I could feel the lump in my throat when he was talking to the young lady in the room when he was saying, I'm, she said, I'm sorry that happened to you. And he was like, but that's just that it didn't happen to me. I'm sitting there like, oh, come on, man. I'm trying to, think. come on, man. You know, I'm... Floyd, LaFoy, what's your sign? I'm a Gemini. Gemini, okay. Yeah. I know it had to be something. I need something with some emotion in yeah, it. Yeah, girl, I'm, you know... <laughs> I don't know which twin gonna start crying, but one of them will. <laughs> But it is what it is. But um, she was amazing in that movie. She was amazing in that movie. She was. I loved her in Luke Cage. Man, to me, I felt like she really shined in Luke Cage. Like season two, what? Yeah. It, was, it was all about her. She was amazing. I don't know what they did after season two. It, it went real left. <laughs> and you just... And, and, and when... I came to Luke Cage late and you know, me and my wife, we just binge watched it. We were like, yo, mm -hmm. Luke Cage, we're not leaving. We're not getting up from the TV until we're done. So we, we, we caught up and then the, the last season we were kind of like, okay, what the hell just happened? <laughs> how, wait, how, they, they had a third season. I must not. I, I remember the season with her. <laughs> I think that where she really shined. It was, I yeah. think it was second. If, if I'm not, yeah. yeah, I think it was, I think it was a third season because it, it, it got really weird and it kind of mm -hmm. went away from what made Luke Cage, Luke Cage. And that's mm -hmm. when a lot of people stopped watching it. I don't even know if they finished it. Um, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I only think they shot a couple of episodes if I'm, if I'm, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, it didn't, it didn't have the, okay. the punch. I know, season, the first two I know season two was, was featured her and it was fire yeah. and that's, that's actually what I interviewed her about, Luke Cage. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So we've actually gone over the time, but since we've gone over, let's keep going. What <laughs> did you guys talk about as far as Luke Cage was concerned? How how did she approach that? If if I have some actors that are going to be listening to this. So what, what did well, you, you guys know, talk I, about? Well, it, 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 let me tell you, it was a all red carpet mm. moments are very... Uh, quick. I mean, some people do try to do documentaries on the red carpet, <laughs> meaning asking a million questions, but it's just not that type of environment. So mm -hmm. it was really brief. I just was asking her about uh, uh, season two and she was going on about um, Mahershala. Like she was like, oh, you know, she was saying how just working with him. You see that? And she grabbed my, my, my shoulder. Like, she, you yeah. know, she was, wow. it was very light. Just so, you know, she just talked about, um, the season two, we really didn't get into get into no James Lipton type of a situation because it was only, it was literally like two minutes, you okay. know. But I'm like, I just talked to 
uh, out, yeah, out Alfred, Twitter. What? And I got her, and I got her to do a drop where she said my name. That's crazy. What? That is gold. That is gold, because not that you're not legitimate, but damn it, that legitimizes you. <laughs> it, it does, because you have you you have well known established people saying, "Hey, do yourself a favor, go watch this." Mm -hmm. because it's good it is good i've watched them they crack me up there are mm -hmm. so many more people that you've interviewed but we would be here all night <laughs> so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to come back you're gonna have to come back oh you okay yeah so i hope i did a good job interviewing the interviewer extraordinaire <laughs> i hope i did okay i hope i did okay folks of course you did of so what's did. what's next well, you know, like I, I would like to, you know, when I first, uh, my first vision was like, oh, you know, have my own uh, uh, TV show. But as, as the digital world has evolved, like being a TV is like radio now. Mm -hmm. um, like I'm not even, I, I just want to build my, um, my platform to be bigger uh, on just on the internet, just where I'm just me just you know what i'm saying like right. i i, I won't work for myself i know, you know? Right. <laughs> but you know what i you know what i knew it was something instagram live we, oh, we yeah, talked yeah. about so much that we didn't even know we're not going anywhere folks we got a couple more minutes instagram <laughs> live because you do some yeah. amazing interviews on instagram live oh. and you even had the and i'm still <laughs> trying to figure this out how 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 did he do that he said he looked he would he looked in the phone like you know just like you looking in your phone right. and he, he he could see it through there and that's so oh. and he's an artist so you know girl it would have been all we could up do the here. same thing and it, and it won't look it won't look like that mm -hmm. <laughs> it would have been out of going to work the next day it's like excuse me sir you have uh lines right right going on your head and everything but how how is how did how did you so okay with COVID. Is that when you decided to make that shift to, to Instagram live? Yes. Yes. I mean, all through uh, 2020, I saw people, you know, just like everybody else on the news, you see people working from home going live. And I just kind of watched because find out what my group was going to be. And I said, yeah, I need to do go uh, be virtual, do Instagram live. And so I decided um, to start doing that and that would be the way that i get uh new content okay mm -hmm. so 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 is that going to be something that you're going to keep in your arsenal or once everything yeah. really really starts to open back up will you go away from that or are you going to keep that no like i you know i think that things have changed forever i think things will open up but now that we know that if i can't get on a plane to get, go to good morning america they could do it at home with right. a ring light <laughs> it's like people asking them to come back to their jobs now when they were efficient for a year and a half at home you know I, really really people <laughs> so you're going to ask me to come back in the office for five days a week mm -hmm. when we've been killing it from home your numbers have gone up your mm -hmm. overhead has gone down but mm -hmm. you want me to come back. And, and they're really running into a, a lot of companies are running into problems with that mm -hmm. because people are quitting saying, you know what, I'll go work for the people that say I can work from home for three days and come in for two, possibly yeah. one. I, I think because I once you know, now we know it. Right. We, the, the big lie is revealed. We know we can do that. Yeah. We, we know we can do that and still be successful at what it is we're getting paid to do. You're, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So where can people find you? Because it's always important that people are able to find you. So where can folks find you? You can find me um, at Studio QTV, uh, really over all platforms, TikTok, um, uh, Facebook, Studio QTV, Instagram, Studio QTV. Uh, you can find uh, my YouTube channel, Quincy Thomas, you know, just put in Quincy Thomas. But you literally can just put Studio Q into Google and a lot of my interviews and stuff, you know, comes comes up because as soon as I would finish my interviews, I'd edit it, put it out there, edit it, put it out there, okay. edit it, put it out there. 
Or you can go to Quincy.com and just click interviews and boom, at least 100 is on that page. And then you can click and go to YouTube and watch the rest. I want everyone to take note of what she just said concerning Googling her. Accessibility and the ease of accessibility. One name. That is so important. That is something that I want all of the actors out there, filmmakers. In order for people to find you, they have to find you. The attention span is really short. I think it's seven seconds. So if you have an extremely long name that people have to type 50 million letters, they're not going to look for you. They're not. <laughs> it's it's the truth. But yeah, just make it so when you send people to search for you that they can actually find you trust me it will it will all work out in the end quincy this was amazing this was phenomenal i had so much fun i had so much Yay! fun when people listen to this they're gonna like was this an interview or was this a party well listen to me that's what that's really what it's all about is a conversation yes. a connection yes yes and i i uh i hope you enjoyed yourself I did. You, Thank you for being interested, you know, to, to even interview me. And oh, to, yeah. To, yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate the interest. Oh, of course. You know, I'm saying when I when I was sitting here, I'm saying, you know what? She's interviewing everybody. I would love to pick her brain and find out how she does that. And you're so bubbly all the time when you're <laughs> when you're interviewing people. I said, I need to have that on my show. I need to have, <laughs> This is the most lively I've ever been. In a, in a, oh, usually really? I'm so basically I'm usually <laughs> more James Lipton type, you know, okay. but uh, I had Cheryl Bedford on last week. Wow. That that interview, if, if you know who Cheryl Bedford is, Women of Color Unite. I have to put a disclaimer of because that's an NC-17 interview. All really? Girl, Cheryl <laughs> Bedford does not pull punches and she just look F-bombs is just all over the place. But it was a phenomenal interview and it was so insightful as mm. to what's going on in Hollywood. Regardless. Yeah, when people can walk away with something. So, And you know what? If you don't walk away from that, having learned something, then the problem lies with you because there's absolutely no way that you, that you won't learn something from every interview that we do because I, I bring women of color on that are really doing great things. And that was one of the reasons why I started this podcast because I'm an avid podcast listener. But when I would listen to podcasts, I would say, now, wait a minute, there's gotta be some dope ass women DPs out there of color. There's gotta be, you know, there's, there's gotta be some phenomenal black line producers that are female, but mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not hearing about them. And mm -hmm. where are they? So I said, well, you know what? And this is my thing. And ladies and gentlemen, this could be you too you see something that's not being done as opposed to saying, well, they're not this and they're not that create it, create it, create it, Cre create what you want to see. And that's what I did. I I'm not going to stand there or sit here and complain about, well, they're not interviewing A, B, C, and D. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're not interviewing. Damn it. I'll do it. Yeah. And here we are. Come on now. Drop the mic. Mic drop. If I drop too many mics, I'm going to have to buy a new one. <laughs> and I ain't got that kind of money yet. You know, I'm, I'm not I'm not at the Eric Thomas level where I could just drop mics. I'll just Look, lay it down on the bed. Right now. Right now. Right, <laughs> right now. now. Oh, I'm working toward that. I'm working on it. Oh, yeah. Trust, it's coming. Trust me. I'm working every yes. single day. It's a brick by brick process. Rome wasn't built in a day. Quincy, thank you so much. Ladies and Thank gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. Yes. You are definitely going to have to come back. And ladies and gentlemen, if you have enjoyed this podcast, please let your friends know we're on Apple. So please go and subscribe and leave a review. But more importantly, subscribe and tell your friends because we have had some absolutely amazing guests on this podcast and we're going to have more in the future, we're going to have more phenomenal people such as Quincy, who are bosses. That is so important. These are bosses. They own their own companies. They own their own 
IP. Go look that up. Own your own mm. IP. It is so important. It is so mm. important. And on that note, again, thank you guys for taking an hour and a half of your day to spend it with us. We truly appreciate it because, as I said earlier, time is the one commodity that you can never get back. And the fact that you decided to give us an hour and a half of it is truly a blessing. And we truly appreciate it. And with that, have a phenomenal night and have a phenomenal weekend and going to next week, blazing trails. Good night, everyone. <laughs>